So hi everybody, um, this is a lightning talk. This is my second time back um, at React NYC. Thank you very much for having me back. Uh, I'm doing this a little bit with a higher difficulty today because it's only 10 minutes. Uh, and also, uh, that's, that's something I planned for, something I did not plan for is my boss is here today. So <laughs> um, uh, extra difficulty. But um, my topic's very simple um, and it's kind of clickbaity and I apologize for that, but it, it gets your attention. Never bundle React again. Um, oh, I also, so I kind of, my first uh, talk was more about contributing to React. Um, and I feel like my role is more uh, to speak towards the, the newer people in the group. Uh, so um, if you have never really considered about like sort of uh, bundle size considerations, um, this is the talk for you. Um, and why do I want to talk about bundle size? It's not the most exciting uh, topic. I'm also not an expert. Um, and uh, th people get really uh, religious about this stuff. Um, but I, I tend to find that the best way to learn things is just to be publicly wrong on the internet. Um, and people will just teach you. Uh, what I learned is great. Like this is important um, and it's also easy. Um, so I want to show you how it's easy. Um, but I just want to have the problem statements first and it's, it's the problem statements very simple. Bundle sizes are too big. Um, how big? So. Uh, just to give you an idea of like, you know, what the performance experts are considering uh, a good performance budget, uh, you just like mathematically calculate uh, what's, a, what's a reasonable time, time, for, time to load for a website. Uh, let's say five seconds. At five seconds, if you take uh, reasonable assumptions for uh, internet speed and uh, computing power, um, this actually translates, the, 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 the links here, this actually translates to 130 kilobytes for your JavaScript bundle. Uh, that's not a lot. Um, and this, like, this is just like the mathematical chart to prove that uh, the math is real, whatever. Uh, but you can, you can dig into the article uh, more if you, if you want to, but this is a real thing, 130 kilobytes. How big is that? What's the average JavaScript per page? Uh, any guesses? Couple of megabytes. 10 megs. Okay, that's, that's, a, that's uh, for you, Ilya. That's, uh, that's why the website is so slow for uh, NYC JS. Um, but the average kilo JavaScript per page is 504. Keep in mind, your, your performance budget is 130 kilobytes, and it's going up every single year, and every single month. Um, and this is not just like the average website. Let's talk about the top websites. 70% of websites are over this basic bare minimum of five second load on a global average internet speed. Um, I took a few metrics. Um, uh, it's, it's funny how like the, the Google, uh, Alex Russell is like the performance expert I quoted. Uh, he works at Google um, and google.com is 327 kilobytes, <laughs> um, which is uh, very interesting over there. Um, so these are just bench benchmarks. Um, um, does that mean that it doesn't matter? Like, you know, these things are going up, like the largest websites in the world are so big. Uh, does that actually not mean that it doesn't matter? Uh, I would argue no, because uh, people will, will wait for them, they won't wait for you. Um, so it's actually more important for you to be performant so that uh, people will stick around and see what you have to say. Uh, obviously, it's easy to criticize other people. Let's talk about ourselves. <laughs> uh, when's the last time you looked at your uh, bundle size? So here, I like to play a game of Price is Right. Um, <laughs> so let's think about a typical React app. It has these bundles. I think it's reasonable to say that these are all typical normal things that we would use in the React stack. Um, I want to have two, two players for um, what's the bundle size of an app that, that bun just bundles all this stuff up? <laughs> yeah. Price is right, so closest wins. Uh, all this stuff. All this just, stuff. just JavaScript. GZIP or not, not GZIP? Not GZIP, huh? Okay, um, I'm gonna say 1.1 megabytes. Oh, Jesus, okay. 1.6? 1.6 1 .6 megabytes for this. Okay, I think I, I did a, too good of a job of setting expectations. It's 189 kilobytes. <laughs> um, so so cool, calm down, guys. <laughs> uh, it's in 61 KB, Jesus. Um, and, and, these, and it's also just one giant bundle, as, as you can see when you, when you load, the, load the site. Um, can we do better? Um, the typical answer is, uh, you, you, and the problem is like this is one giant bundle and you can see this is all the stuff that goes into your webpack. Um, but really, um, you probably already have this stuff. Go into, go into your Chrome cache 
um, and just look for libraries that are just common, like you already cache this. So why are you downloading it in every single bundle? It just makes no sense. Um, the other thing about the popularity of React, React is 25% of, of jobs on, on Hacker News. Um, like this is, uh, you know, it's, it's a dominant framework, but that means it's also a network effect. So uh, all your, or your, your uh, audience, your, your visitors are probably already cached this stuff. So use their cache and, and not yours. Use their bandwidth and not yours. Um, but the, the, the problem with the development uh, situation is that there are main, two main choices. You have a big bundle and no CDN, or a small bundle and no ES module. So you can't import stuff if you just like, you know, go on the index.html and include a link to, to CDN. Um, and this is just like an illustrative example of what happens if you try to do that. Um, Webpack just doesn't know where you're importing from just because it doesn't read your index.html. So uh, are there only two choices? Uh, obviously, that's a leading question. Uh, no. So I'm here to show you one weird trick. Uh, <laughs> doctors hate him. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and, and just keep in mind, like, this is not like a huge library. This is just a trick to get, to, to get you started thinking like, what is possible with Webpack? Uh, what is possible with your bundles? Um, so some guy just wrote this dynamic CDN Webpack plugin. And what it does is uh, you, just, you just require it over here, and then you put it as a plugin in Webpack. And just those two lines alone, um, they transform your bundle. So this is your index.html from Create React app. Um, you just have one giant mega bundle, right? Um, instead of that, it auto splits for you and, and links to CDNs for you. And you can still use it within uh, Webpack in, in, as, as an ES module, right? So just because it, it keeps that links, link for you in the post-processing stage and not, in, not, not before. Um, so CDN plus ES modules is money. Um, uh, and, and this is the results. Uh, everything reduces to a five kilobyte bundle because now it's just your code. Um, and you parallel load this, and it's probably from cache since you already visited a site that uses React somewhere. Um, so that's, the, that's how easy it was, two lines of code. Um, so that's, that brings us to three choices, right? Like, you know, hopefully best of both worlds. Um, I also, a lot of people also, like, you, obviously CDN is not the best situation, uh, best choice for every situation, but it's relevant for most situations. Um, but then there are also mo more choices. So you can, you can actually, uh, if you don't want to use CDN, you can bundle all your commonly used libraries into vendor vendor.js. Um, you can also do async loading, especially with, if you're using React Router, uh, every single page can be a different bundle. Um, ES modules is also arriving in the browser and, that, and the support for that will, will grow and, and we can actually start using that separately. Um, and more and more and more and more. Um, so these are all very, very easy tricks that you can do. Uh, I was just here to show you uh, that one trick. Uh, I'm at Swix on Twitter. You can, I always, all my talks have a GitHub page, so go check it out. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Um, I, have, I have one bonus tip for you. It's two characters, all right? I love this stuff, all right? Um, and it's, it's for those people who don't read Webpack um, docs. It's Webpack dash P. And what does dash P do? It, it, it applies Uglify and it applies um, clean HTML. And so that in a production app reduces your, your, your uh, bundle size by 60% because it just squishes all your JavaScript together. So Webpack dash P. Thank you. <laughs>